we're good. We're live. What's going on, everybody? It's Friday, and we're here to talk about Friday Night SmackDown. In my opinion, a really good episode of Friday Night SmackDown. We had some surprises. We had John Cena. We got stuff announced for the Royal Rumble, and we got a lot to talk about. I like the show. Luke, what did you think of tonight's show? See, I thought SmackDown was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Did a good job of announcing stuff for next week and like the week after that, and did a good job announcing some stuff for the Royal Rumble. I thought it was a very productive Friday Night SmackDown. It's a good word to use, productive. I like that. I like that because a lot of times, and this is for both companies, AEW and WWE, people give them crap for, oh, you're, you're not announcing enough stuff ahead of time. Well, you're not telling us what we're getting next week, this week, blah, 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 blah. Well, they announced quite a few things for tonight's Friday Night SmackDown that we'll talk about here as we go on. But with that, I want to say thank you for watching this podcast. And whether you're watching live or watching later, you can watch YouTube, you can watch on Twitch, you can listen, podcast services all around the globe. But maybe you're watching live right now, twitch.tv forward slash Unlimited. And if you are, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by subscribing or by hitting the donate button down below or donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also, remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a tiered subscription or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you either have Amazon Prime or have access to somebody else's Amazon Prime account, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games, and they always give you one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you did right here, Pro Wrestling Unlimited. Also remember, if you're watching later on YouTube, you can help us out over there by becoming a channel member. As a channel member, you get early access to news, early access podcast episodes, early access non-news videos, and so much more. Plus, you can get all of that by heading over to patreon.com forward slash PW Unlimited. And if you miss any of this show, you can always catch it on all major podcast platforms like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. And if there's one you use that we're not on, hit me up on DMs, whether that's on Twitter or whatever. You can either um, contact the PW Unlimited channel. You can contact me specifically at Timmy Buddy and let me know, hey, we're not on this podcast platform that I use. How can I listen and also figure out how to get us on that podcast platform? Finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game, whether you're buying an old game, whether you're claiming the free games or getting bucks for Rocket League, Fortnite, or Fall Guys, use the code right down here, PWUnlimited at checkout, and you will be directly supporting us at no extra cost. No extra cost to you. Doesn't cost you anything to put in the code. Put it in. And then bing, bang, boom, we get a little kickback from it. Just say, we get a little kickback, and you guys just have to buy something. If you're already buying something, whether you're getting Elden Ring, you're getting Marvel Spider-Man, you're pre-ordering The Last of Us Part 1, which I still think should have came out sooner than March on PC because of the show. But anyways, PC version of The Last of Us does come out in March. Pre-order it and use the code P-W-U-N-L-I-M-I-T-E-D at checkout. You'll be supporting us, and it's super, super easy to do. But with that, we have Friday Night Smackdown to talk about. Michael Cole and Wade Barrett briefly discussed everything going on on tonight's show, including the main event tag team match before Bray Wyatt was make his way out to the ring. Wyatt's got the cool entrance. They still got the whole door that flies open or whatever, flies open. And then he walks out, and it's always cool to see. It never gets old to me. Some... I mean, I can see where some people are like, oh, I'm kind of bored of it already, but it never gets old for me. But Bray is in the ring. Before he says anything, they recap him attacking a cameraman, and Bray talks about that. Bray enters, big reaction from the crowd, and he says he doesn't consider himself a bad person, and he doesn't regret the bad things that he's done. However, he does regret hitting the cameraman and attacking him last week because, well, the cameraman didn't deserve it. He said he did nothing to deserve it, and I want to apologize. Hopefully, he's watching and sees my apology. He starts to talk about something else, and then out would come L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight comes out and does his, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
starts mocking Bray Wyatt for the apology. And he believes that Wyatt paid one of his goons dressed like Uncle Howdy a few weeks and come out. He still thinks that Bray is Uncle Howdy and that when Uncle Howdy came out on the stage a few weeks ago, that was somebody not actually... It, yeah, a little confusing, but you get what I'm saying. You get what he's saying. He walks down to the ring as the crowd is chanting, You suck. And Bray's trying not to laugh at the You Suck chants directed at LA Knight. Knight then says that he wants to end this. He wants to put this in the past. And Bray's like, I could have ended this a long time ago. He's like, I want a match. I'm going to be at the Royal Rumble. You're probably going to be at the Royal Rumble, so I want to face you at the Royal Rumble. Wyatt called Knight a little idiot and added that it's time to show Knight and the world how cruel he could be. He accepted Knight's challenge for the Rumble, and then another Uncle Howdy video played before Uncle Howdy could come out on the stage. Not only did he come out on the stage this time, though, he walked down to the ring. Uncle Howdy would take off his, his hat, put it on the apron, and get into the ring. He would then stand between both Bray Wyatt and L.A. Knight. He would then turn to Bray and stand side by side with him where L.A. Knight just goes, well, I saw this coming. But he didn't see it coming because Uncle Howdy then grabbed Bray and hit him with his sister Abigail. L.A. Knight jumped out of the ring and goes, and they catch this perfectly on camera. He goes, what is going on? What is going on? Uncle Howdy then gets out of the ring as Bray is laying there dead. And he walks off, puts his hat back on, and leaves. Later on in the show, they do announce that Bray Wyatt will be taking on LA Knight in the pitch black match. But unless I missed something, they didn't give any details on what's the, what the pitch black match is going to be. But it's some sponsor match with Mountain Dew. What do you think of this opening segment? I liked it. I liked the nice swerve where Uncle Howdy gave Bray his sister Abigail. I, I thought that was very creative. I mean, the pitch black match, I assume it'll, it's going to be similar to a lights out match, I'd say. Well, are you thinking the lights out match in the way of how AEW does it and it's just a hardcore match? Or lights out match in the way of old school lights out matches where they're like blindfold matches? Or with just the lights turned down? I was thinking, like, the lights turned down. Gotcha. Getting the Twitch poll posted here. All right, if you're watching live on Twitch, the poll is live now. As we move forward, Sami Zayn knocked on the Bloodline's locker room door, and this kind of shocked me a little bit, because I'm like, all right, Roman Keith's praising Sami. Why does he still have to knock on the door? He can't just walk in? Usos can just walk in. Solo can just walk in. Not Sammy? Okay. Out would come Paul Heyman, though. Paul would walk out and go, Sammy, how was your Hanukkah? And he goes, ah, probably as good as your Ramadan. Heyman then noted that Roman was proud of Zayn's comments about John Cena and Kevin Owens from last week's show. <laughs> Where Heyman had to say, live in front of the world, even though we all know that wasn't a live show. Zayn. So they wanted to talk strategy with Roman, and Heyman goes, I'm going to have to level with you. You know, uh, the optics of Reigns standing in the ring and the fans chanting Sammy was not good. Fans broke out into a Sammy chant right here. Zane's like, I, I, I just want to talk to Roman and figure out if there's anything that needs to happen during the match tonight. And all of a sudden, Heyman goes, all right, uh, delay tactics are over. Yeah, you can enter now. And Sammy's kind of like, Delay tactics? What? Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go speak to Roman, and he walks in. Then, interesting note, Michael Cole actually mentioned the passing of Don West and sent some condolences to his family. Didn't see that one coming because Don West never worked for WWE as far as I know. But, yeah, Don West did pass away. He was battling cancer. And Mike Tanay is the one that, that officially announced his passing online. But yeah, all the well wishes to the West family. I know, I don't know much about him outside of TNA, but, or, and the home shopping network stuff. But I'm just going to say that back in the day when TNA was first starting in like 2002 to 2005, 
I probably watched TNA more than WWE. And Don West was always on that show, just being one of the best commentators of the that decade. I think Don West may have been one of the best guys on commentary from like 2002 to 2005, 6, 7. He was with the company since 2012, but I just feel like he was amazing doing that commentary with with Mike Tanay because they were, you can tell that they had a great both working and personal relationship. Like they were, you could tell they were friends and loved working together, but their styles were so different that it worked perfectly. Yeah, I haven't really watched much of TNA. Like back in the day, I mean, I was only like two years old in right. 2005. So, like, I've heard he was a good commentator. Oh, he had so, like go back at some. Yeah, I know. Go he, back at some old videos to like yeah. see. He had what you would call amazing energy. Basically, in the 90s, he was like one of the the hype guys for the home shopping network, trying to get you to buy crap. So then we had the first match of the night about 20 minutes into the show. It was Solo Sokoa against Sheamus. This match was fun. I really enjoyed this match. The Usos were out there, and so were Butch and Ridge Holland. So Sokoa and Sheamus started trading hard shots early on right as the bell rang. Sheamus rocked Sokoa with a stiff forearm and sent him to the ringside area with a clothesline. Sokoa lost his cool and grabbed a chair. But the Usos stopped him as they went to a commercial break. Sokoa took over during the break and hit an Umaga splash. He slowed down the pace with a chin lock, and Sheamus did break free, but Sokoa responded with a Samoan drop, taking down Sheamus yet again. Sheamus then rocked Sokoa at one point with the clothesline to regain control. Sokoa absorbed a kick and fired up. Sheamus, though, hit him with a tilt a whirl backbreaker. After the 10 beats of the Baldrin, Sheamus went for a bro kick. Sokoa... He hit the bro kick. Sokoa recovers, though, and caught Sheamus with a super kick. Sheamus, though, jumped right back up, almost no-sold it, and rocked Sokoa with a knee to the face. Sheamus then locked on a Texas Cloverleaf. Jay caused a distraction, allowing Jimmy to pull Sokoa to the ropes, where he got the rope break. There was then a wild brawl at ringside with the Brawling Brutes and the Usos. Sheamus, at one point, dove off the top rope, wiping out all the Usos. Sokoa took advantage of this and sent Sheamus into the ring post. He then hit a Uranage on the apron, followed it up with a Simone Spike, and picked up the victory. And they said in a commentary, oh, that's another homage to his uncle Umaga. Like, they're making Solo Sokoa just the new Umaga. He's doing all the Umaga stuff, but in a 2022 way, in more of a... How do I explain it? He's got a younger, almost kind of like... I came from the Indies style of Umaga work. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty cool that they're making him the next Umaga. Mm-hmm. Like he fits like so well yeah. with that role. So after the match, Sokoa and the Usos continue their beatdown on Sheamus. And my thought was, where the hell is Butch and Ridge? Where they they just kind of disappeared for like a minute or two. They basically tried to take him out like they took out um, Riddle. They placed a chair over his neck and sat him up in the corner. They were going to go for the Umaga splash when all of a sudden out would come Drew McIntyre to a huge pop from the crowd. He ran down, cleared the ring of the of the bloodline. And as soon as the bloodline ran out of the ring, all of a sudden here comes Butch and Ridge back in. I'm like, where the hell were they? The Usos really took him out that hard where they couldn't shave, save Sheamus? Sheamus then finally got to his feet, and the four of them stood in the ring as they looked at the Usos and um, Solo Sokoa on the ramp. Also, it was set up later on in the show. It was announced that the match we were supposed to get weeks ago, Drew and Sheamus against the Usos for the tag titles, taking place, I want to say it's next week? Because they announced that for next week in two weeks. Uh, next week. Tag title match next week. Usos defending against Drew and Sheamus. I mean, I kind of expected Drew to come out, make the save. I kind of thought they would set up the match at Royal Rumble. Well, it's fine that they're setting it up for next week. Yeah, because Drew and Sheamus are probably going to both be in the Royal Rumble. I mean, you can do double duty, but. 
I mean, there, there, there's that rumor that, you know, even though he's not one of the betting odds favorites, Drew's got a big role at WrestleMania that could be a title match, so maybe Drew's winning the Rumble. Don't know how they, like, separate the belts by WrestleMania. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. I say that Cody still just comes out and goes, I think Cody should win the Rumble. Like I said the other day, Cody should win the Rumble and go, I respect both belts, but I only want the one that my dad tried to win and couldn't win. So that's the way I would do it. We then got uh, set up for the next match, SmackDown Women's title match. Shayna Baszler was at ringside with Ronda Rousey as she was challenged by Raquel Rodriguez, who won a gauntlet match last week. Um, since Saturday says IC title match in two weeks. Yeah, I know the IC title match is in two weeks, but we're not to that point yet in the review. And I wasn't sure if that match was in two weeks as well as the tag title match in two weeks or if the tag title match was next week. Tag title match next week. We're all good since, since Saturday. So, Rousey and Rodriguez. Match was actually really good. Like, I was going into it thinking, oh, this would be a decent to okay match. No, I would call this a good match. And they worked because I thought it was going to get kind of like muddled up with them trying to work over the fake injury, but they did a good job working over the fake injury. And there was a spot that I'm going to get to here in a second that looked awesome. Freaking Raquel standing on the middle ropes and Rhonda's basically up on her shoulder, like way up in the air with the arm bar on towards the end of the, actually it was basically the finish of the match. Like, We'll get to it in a second, but this shot looked awesome. Anyways, Rousey wasted no time going right after the injured arm. Rodriguez did fire back and caused Rousey, uh, and caught Rousey with a shoulder tackle. They briefly fought at ringside with Rodriguez press slamming Rousey back into the ring. Uh, Rodriguez was firmly in control at one point with a splash in the corner, and Rousey avoided a second one with Rodriguez going shoulder first into the post. After a commercial break, Rousey choked Rodriguez on the top rope. Rousey slowed the pace down, but Rodriguez did break free. Rodriguez fired up and hit a stiff clothesline with the bad arm. In a creative spot, Rodriguez went for a spinning slam, but Rousey countered into an arm bar. Rodriguez reversed it into a Boston Crab, with Rousey reversing the Boston Crab into an ankle lock. Rodriguez would then escape and hit a flapjack. She set it for the Tejano bomb, but Rousey tried to counter with an arm bar. They then fell off the top rope, because this is the whole thing. They're on the top rope. Or middle rope. She's got it up for the Tejano bomb. But Rousey shifts it into an arm bar. Eventually they fall off the ropes. Crash down. Rodriguez taps out. Ronda retains the title. We then go to commercial break. Come back. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm reading this wrong. No, we don't go to commercial break. My bad. So, Shayna jumps in the ring. And they immediately start celebrating. Referee had... Yeah, they start celebrating. And <clears throat> where was I? Uh, I just lost my spot in my notes. And as they're celebrating, Rhonda had a mic. And then out would come Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair would make her big, long-anticipated return. And I was shocked that the crowd actually cheered her as big as the, and as much as they did. But before we get into that, what did you think of the title match itself? It was better than what I expected. I, I'll say that. I thought it was just going to be like an, like an average kind of match. But like grabbed my attention. Like, mm -hmm. spot towards the end, I thought it was pretty cool. Very mm. creative. Uh, Since Saturday says Charlotte has new music. Well, I didn't notice it. Did she have new music? Like a, like a, it's kind of the same as like old one, but it has like a different beat to it. If it makes gotcha. Sense. Cause, cause once the title match ended, I stopped paying attention for a moment and didn't realize Charlotte can't had come out until like halfway through her walking down the ramp. So I wasn't paying attention to the music, but then when they played the music after the title win, I didn't notice it being different. So... Magmalore says sounded like her dad's. Well, hers also already sounded like her dad's, so I don't know. I'll have to go back and check that one. But Charlotte comes out. Rousey mocked Flair's injury and wondered if Flair wanted a title shot at SummerSlam or Royal Rumble, which is sooner. Flair corrected Rousey and says, no, I want one right here right now. 
I'm not waiting. And Ronda goes, oh, really? Okay. And the referee called for the bell. Baszler tried talking Ronda out of it, saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Ronda wanted to do it anyways. Flair mocked Rousey and rocked her with a big boot. She also took out Baszler off the apron with a big boot, hit her with a spear, uh, Ronda that is, but Ronda countered the spear into an arm bar, which was actually a clever looking spot. Flair would then eventually roll up Ronda and pin her one, two, three, new SmackDown Women's Champion. Didn't see this one coming, but I'm all for it. I like it. Charlotte comes back and immediately is at the top and now a 14-time Women's Champion. i say this right now. Like, once she, re- she came out and said, like, I want to challenge you for the belt tonight, I was like, yeah, she's winning the belt. Yeah. They're not going to have her lose when she, like right after she returns. No, I thought she was going to come out and set something up for, like, Rumble or a future SmackDown. But when they said, no, right here, right now, like you said, there was no way Charlotte was going to lose. But regardless... They'll probably do a rematch at Royal Rumble, so... Very good chance. I didn't even think about that, but very good chance. So, yeah, there's one month till the Rumble. Well, technically, 28 days, 29 days, something like that. January 28th. But as we move forward, we go to the locker rooms with the bloodline. Sammy's in there with Roman talking strategy. The Usos are there. Solo Sokoa, Paul Heyman. And Zane wondered if Reigns has a problem with the fans chanting for him. Reigns says that he doesn't have a problem and praised Sammy from last week. Basically it. Then they showed footage of Dominic and Rhea showing up to Mysterio's grandfather's house on Christmas Eve. Ray's wife slapped Ripley. This is all the video that was posted last week on social media. They showed Ray, uh, no, Dom getting arrested. And he pleaded with Ripley to call the lawyers because he couldn't last in jail. Back in the locker room. That was creative. Go, oh, yeah. We need another one of these, like, tomorrow for New Year's. <laughs> hey, I brought Mommy. We're celebrating New Year's. Right. Uh, back in the locker room, we got the New Day, Maximum Male Models, Mad Cat Moss, Ricochet. And Ricochet made fun of Top Dollar for messing up his dive a few weeks ago. Woods and Kingston held a broom for him to jump over. And at first, Top Dollar tried to laugh it off. They all made jokes about him messing up. Top Dollar then had enough of it when Ricochet made the joke. He shoved Ricochet. And Ashanti the Adonis kind of was like, hey, cool it. Calm down. Let, let's leave the room. And we'll, we'll figure this all out. Everyone thought that Top Dollar overreacted a little bit. But hey, if people are going to make fun of you, you got to kind of defend yourself, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't be against this idea, but I also wouldn't be against if like Hit Row kind of like maybe turned heel a little bit. Right. Exactly what uh, Baby Ice in the, uh, the Twitch chat also just said. I mean, they were heels for a little bit in NXT. Kind of. I mean, you could say it a little bit, yeah. I think they would make great heels. I do, too. <laughs> the next up, we had what they called Gunther's Path of Destruction. Imperium entered the ring to discuss Gunther's reign as Intercontinental Champion and his Path of Destruction. Ludwig Kaiser and Gita Von Vinci praised Gunther as an unbeatable champion. They showed a video of all of his wins, and before Gunther could speak... Because they said no one can beat him. Braun Strowman would come out to the ring. Strowman pointed out that he wasn't in the video because Gunther has never beat him. Strowman would then challenge Gunther to a match for the title, but Imperium laughed and walked away. Strowman stopped them. And then like he got into a little thing with, Vi- uh, with uh, Kaiser and Vinci. He blocked a chop block and sent Gunther to ringside. The Strowman Express ran down Kaiser and Vinci, but Gunther moved out of the way. Strowman then crashed into the barricade. Gunther then grabbed a chair and beat down Strowman. Barrett then had a line, the line of the night, where he called it a Waffle House Brawl. And if you don't get the joke, well, there's a video going around on social media of a freaking crazy Waffle House Brawl from this past week. Everyone's reposting it if you haven't seen it. But Imperium starts beating down Strowman, so out would come Ricochet with his own chair to make the save. 
Gunther appeared to suffer a legit injury here because when he jumped out of the ring, Ricochet swung over the top rope and cracked Gunther with the chair. So hopefully he's okay, but he got hit hard. And kind of like, I don't want to say was wobbly on his feet or anything, but he got hit hard and didn't like get the hands up or nothing to block this, this chair shot. So I haven't seen or heard anything yet, but if we do hear anything on this chair shot, we'll let you guys know. I'm curious to see like how much longer Gunther will hold the belt because I don't really see him losing to Braun Strowman. I see Sheamus winning it because they made a point to state earlier in the show that, um, what was it? Sheamus has a goal for 2022 and is to win the one title he never won, the Intercontinental Championship. 2023? 2023, I mean, yeah. Also, um, Gunther was busted open by the chair shot. There is a video on Twitter that I just found of... I guess medical and stuff checked on him after the chair shot and they have a towel over his head trying to stop the blood. So that's what it was. He basically busted Gunther open with a chair shot right on the top of the head. But as we move forward, main event time. Time for our main event. John Cena and Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. Match went 11 minutes. And I'm watching it with my roommate and whatnot, and I go, all right, watch. Cena's not going to do anything in this match. He's going to be very limited because by the end of March, he's got two movies that need to be filmed. He ain't going to do anything to potentially get hurt. And what happened? Cena did four moves. He did the, well, actually, so Cena basically all I did was two shoulder tackles, two of his little I'm going to throw you up, spin you, and drop you, and then the five-knuckle shuffle. Five moves. That's all Cena did this entire freaking match. Oh, and he took a beating from Roman at one point when Roman pulled him off the apron and punched him a couple times at ringside. Other than that, Cena didn't do diddly squat. And even with that, I thought the match was great. It was, a, it was a match to make like Kevin Owens kind of like look strong to like potentially going to face Roman at Royal Rumble. Yes, this match did two things. It made Sami Zayn look weak in the eyes of the bloodline for losing. And it gave, like you said, uh, Kevin Owens momentum to look strong going into a possible match at the Royal Rumble. So Cena, it also go for it. Like, also kind of like maybe like tease like Roman possibly getting angry at Sammy mm -hmm. for losing. Cause yep. they're gonna go the route of Ken and Sammy gonna challenge the Usos for the tag belts. This is a good way to like start it out. Yeah. So Kevin and Sammy started off the match. Zayn had the early advantage with the side headlock. Owens fought back with a Senton and then dropped him on the top rope. Owens would then smack Sammy in the face, giving him a bloody nose. And what do they always say? Especially both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have said this in interviews in the past. Your closer friends, you'll hit them harder. You'll hit them harder than anybody because you know that they're not going to get pissed off at you when you fuck them up. And that's what happened. Kevin Owens gave Sami Zayn a bloody nose. Also, I don't know where it happened, but Kevin Owens' left eye got something messed up. His, by the end of the match, his left eye was swollen. Did you see where it happened? I didn't. I... I didn't see it. I noticed it like at the end. Yeah. The, like his eye was like super swollen. It looked like, like someone like stabbed him in the eye or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, it looked like he was in a freaking war kind of MMA fight where the other guy was just beating his eye. But yeah, I can get, I can get your analogy too. But I'm seeing see if I can find a picture of this because this looked bad. Like this looked bad. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, his eye is fucked. I'm going to pull this picture up on the screen <clears throat> from Twitter. Um, let's see. Screen share. Yeah. This was Kevin Owens' eye by the end of the match. Like, holy crap. Let me see if I can find a clearer shot. Hold on. Let me see if WWE.com may have one. Because his eye was wrecked. Let's see. Um, 
WWE.com, SmackDown Images. Let's scoot forward to the end really fast and see what we can find here. I can pull them all up on the screen. See if we can find any images, like clear shots. Oh, they don't have everything uploaded yet. Nope, not all the photos have been uploaded yet. Never mind. But, yeah, Kevin Owens, I wrecked. As far as the match itself does go. Um, Reigns at one point tagged in and the crowd erupted for Cena. Chanting, Cena, Cena. And then, we want Cena. Owens considered tagging and Reigns took advantage of the momentary, like, not paying attention of Kevin Owens. And he rocked Owens with the clothesline. After commercial break, the bloodline was firmly in control and the heels isolated Owens on their side of the ring. He did fight back and rocked Sammy with a clothesline. Owens tried to tag Cena, but Roman pulled Cena off the apron, beat him down a couple couple shots at ringside, and Sammy followed this up with the Huluva kick. Two Cena off the apron. Uh, back in the ring, Owens countered a Huluva kick with a super kick. Owens went to the corner, but Cena still down. This is when I noticed the eye all messed up, right around this spot. He rocked Zayn with a second super kick, and a pop-up pop powerbomb for a near fall. Reigns then tagged in and went for a Superman punch. Owens recovered and rocked Reigns with a super kick. He followed this up with a frog splash halfway across the ring almost. And got a near fall off of it. Reigns did counter a pop-up powerbomb attempt and hit a Superman punch. Reigns did miss a spear. And Owens finally was able to tag in Cena to a tremendous pop from the crowd in Tampa. Cena ran a wild on Zayn and Reigns. But like I said, it only did five moves the entire match. Like, not five moves. Five moves in total. Not like five different moves multiple times. Five moves in total. Two shoulder tackles. Two of those throw you up, spin you, drop you. Then he tags in Kevin Owens. Oh, six moves. My bad. They do the five-knuckle shuffle together. Cena then hits the attitude adjustment on Reigns to take him out of the match. Owens gives Sammy a stunner. And the match is it. Owens pins Sammy, and the match is over. And that's it. So, six moves. I forgot the attitude adjustment at the end. Thoughts? Kind of disappointing to see, like, Roman only do, like, six moves. I thought he could have done a lot more. But... You, mean, you mean Cena? Cena. Yeah. I guess they're trying to, like, keep him safe so he doesn't get injured for, like, future movies and stuff. Right, because he's got two movies that need to be, at, at least that we know of, two movies to be filmed by the end of March. Also, I'll pull something here up on the screen that that uh, WWE on Fox and Fox Sports actually tweeted out. Or not actually, no, posted on Instagram. What the heck? John Cena getting his own version of WW2K22? So this was posted by Fox Sports. And hold on, I'm going to look something up really quick. Just to make sure this isn't like a fake tweet. Hold on. We're going to go to Instagram really fast. If you guys saw that, it's a GOAT edition of WWE 2K22. So let's now go WWE on Fox. Let me just double check. Nope, this is a real tweet. This is a real or Instagram post. Okay, hold on. Pull this back up on the screen. This is interesting. Oh, Okay. Now there's context here. It says, hear us out at WWE Games. It's about time. So they're saying that they should release another version of the game with Cena on the cover. Call it the GOAT mode. I don't know if it's actually going to happen. It'd be cool if maybe they released this with like all the DLC characters in one big, you know, like game of the year title kind of edition thing. That'd be pretty cool. But it's not anything official. It's just them tweeting something going, maybe you should do this. I mean, kind of <clears throat> late for that, though. I mean, well, yeah. at this point, you should probably just be, like, focusing on trying to release uh, the next two. It's a, It would be a good idea for 2K23, maybe do, like, a GOAT edition. And, uh, they, are they doing a season two of Peacemaker, and did they, like, finish filming it? I know they are. I don't know. We could look really fast. Let's go. Um, I can tell you right now. 
John Cena, IMDb, Peacemaker. So as of right now, Peacemaker 2 is still in production. The Peacemaker Season 2. So I don't know if it's actually been filmed or not. IMDb says that it's in production, but doesn't say if it's... Because it would say in production, filming, post-production, completed. And it's only saying in production, which means me to believe that maybe they haven't started filming Season 2 yet. Um, yeah. It's just a Season 2 is slated to come out in 2023 and there's no word yet on how many episodes it might be nine episodes like season one if it's gonna get released in 2023 they gotta get started soon right so with that some stuff was announced for next week and the following week of smackdown we got the wwe undisputed tag team championships on the line with the usos defend against drew mcintyre and sheamus plus next week ricochet will go one-on-one -on -one with top dollar in a royal rumble qualifying match glad to see that and then in two weeks the intercontinental championship will be on the line when gunther defends this title against braun Strowman. So with that that's everything that went down tonight on friday whoa whoa, whoa. barbara walters died what when Hold on. Yeah. An hour ago, ABC News says, Breaking, Barbara Walters, who shattered the glass ceiling and became a dominant force in an industry once dominated by men, has died. She was 93. Well, holy crap! Barbara frickin' Walters died. Damn. First Betty White at the end of last year, and now Barbara Walters at the end of this year. Holy crap. But with that, that is everything that went down tonight on Friday Night Smackdown. Magma Lord says, who's that? Boy, you must be young to not know who Barbara Walters is. You ever watched The View? Because she started that. Barbara Walters was, if there was no, mm, I can't say that, but Barbara Walters basically helped get women into journalists, like television journalism and stuff like that. She was like the first big name as far as females do go in TV journalism and news reporting and all that kind of stuff. But with that, that's everything we got to say about Friday Night Smackdown. Now it's time to see what you guys thought of tonight's Friday Night Smackdown. Remember, you can be part of the show. All you got to do is text in to 510-906-1341. Again, text in to 510-906-1341. Before we get into the text messages, we got to check the polls. So as far as the Twitch poll does go, 99% like tonight's SmackDown. 1% thought it was just all right. As far as the YouTube Twitter poll, Twitter poll, we'll go Twitter poll first. That one's already refreshed. As far as the Twitter poll does go, 76% liked the show, 15% thought it was just all right, and 7.9% didn't like SmackDown. As far as the YouTube poll does go, 89% liked the show, 7% thought it was just all right, and 4% didn't like SmackDown. Uh, some of the comments here, it says, excuse me, it says, wow, the whole world, WWE universe of, okay, never mind, this is like poorly written and my brain can't comprehend. Um, this person says, I thought SmackDown was 50-50. This person says, okay, this is a troll comment right here. I hated it. Triple H takes an L for booking Charlotte to win the title again. How is that an L, you goob? This person says, this is a great last SmackDown of the year. Charlotte is back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. She won the title. Welcome back. As far as the text messages do go. First one here says, should John Cena wrestle full-time again or should keep wrestling part-time since he's an actor? Part-time. Cena's like 40-something years old. Yes, we see like guys like Jericho wrestling into their 50s full-time and stuff, but Cena broke into the industry of acting. I know I said that weird, but Cena's an actor now, a successful actor to boot, so he can go there, stay over there and do that and just show up every so often and wrestle once or twice a year. I'm not, I'm not against I it. Probably makes more money off acting than wrestling 
time for WWE. I, I mean, I could be wrong about that. But. Good chance. And Cena not being around every week is actually better for WWE because if Cena's around every week, the, the draw factor may wear off. And if he's just here every so often, a couple of times a year, that's going to A, do big ratings, and C, or B, do big ticket sales because people go, oh my God, Cena's back? We haven't seen Cena in how long? Because when Cena was announced two weeks ago for tonight's show, in three days, they sold an additional 4,000 tickets just because Cena was announced. So if Cena's there every week, people are going to be like, eh, I'll see Cena next time they come. Eh, I'll see Cena when I go to that pay-per-view or whatever. So it makes him a bigger draw not being there every week. This person here says, what scenario do you think is better for Roman to drop the WWE title before WrestleMania? WWE doing a storyline where Roman vacates the title or Roman loses in a match? Well, I think they could do two different things. Either A, Roman has to defend the title in the Rumble and loses, or they wait till Mania and he loses it at Mania, either in a singles match to Cody, I'm still sitting on that Cody Rhodes thing, or maybe even a triple threat where it's Cody and Seth Rollins against Roman, and Cody pins Seth. Just an opinion. Um, either one. All right, here's one for you. Give me one or two NXT names you would like to see in the Royal Rumble. Carmelo Hayes would be pretty cool in the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And maybe Braun Breaker, you know, he's the NXT champion. Seen, we've seen Andrade in the Rumble as the NXT champion. Right. For, as far as the women's, maybe Indy Hartwell. Mm -hmm. They could do something with her and like Candace together. That'd be fun. So I would think on the men's side, Grayson Waller, I think, would do well. And Carmelo Hayes, like you said. But for the women, Wendy Chu. Wendy Chu falls asleep in the corner and people forget about her for like 20 minutes. I'm just going to say it. Wendy Chu falls asleep in the corner and they forget about her for like 20 minutes. And then she finally pops up and they're like, oh, you're still here? And then she does whatever and gets eliminated. And then That'd be hilarious. either Indy Hartwell, like you said, that's a good one. Or maybe even Cora Jade. Like Cora Jade would, would shine in the Royal Rumble. Well, could shine. Now, as far as the champions, though, because I see since Saturday saying Roxanne Perez, you said Braun Breaker. I think that would have worked five years ago. But when Charlotte challenged for the NXT Women's Championship after winning the Rumble, that kind of now makes it go, oh, well, then the NXT champions shouldn't be in the Rumble if they can be challenged for their belts. So, just saying. Um, this person says, since we know Sasha is going to be in New Japan, what do you think is next for Naomi? No freaking clue. Because for all we know, they let her contract expire because her contract is supposed to be up in like June. So for all we know, they just let it expire and she can do whatever she wants. I don't know if she's what she's doing because there's all this news of Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. And unfortunately, Naomi leaves with Sasha and then just gets forgot about. And, like, fans don't rarely even ask about her, which really sucks as well. And final text message here says, Are you surprised of the result of the main event? No, it's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Owens was going to pin Sami Zayn. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. So, no, not surprised one bit. got to make KO strong, like, going into Royal Rumble, if he's going to challenge Roman, which... That's probably going to happen. Yep. With that, guys, that's everything we got regarding tonight's Friday Night Smackdown. I want to say thank you for joining us if you're watching live. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. Or if you're watching or listening later, whether that's YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited or podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. We're not going to be live anytime this weekend, but we'll be back Monday morning for the wrestling wrap-up. So with that, I want to say... Have a great weekend. Have a great New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, however you want to say it. And we'll see you back here live in 2023.
Have a good one, guys.